I want to welcome you to week 19. This, this is 19 weeks we've been in a study in 2 Corinthians. And I want to urge you to go back. This is literally two years. Go back two years and to June the 21st of 2021. And get in it. If you're not a, a regular listener to this podcast, our, our website has a, a, a phone app. It's good. It's good for uh, iPhone and Android, and you can download this phone app. You can get this thing in all kinds of different ways. But uh, if if it, the easiest way is to download the phone app and get it, just it'll it'll come directly to your phone six days a week. But I want to urge you to where, however you're listening to this thing, I want you to go back to June the twenty first of two thousand twenty one. And, and start this in him scripture study with us. We're well over two years in this study of teaching people who they are in Jesus Christ. And that we you know we spent 41 weeks in, in, the, in the in him scripture study with that we have this card that we give away. And, and when we, when we uh, finished that, the Lord said, go into the book of Romans. We was in the book of Romans, I think, 25 weeks and, and, and 27 weeks in the, in the book of 1 Corinthians. And now we're, this is week 19 of, of second curric- a study in 2 Corinthians. And it just gets stronger and stronger every day. I mean, we, we've been in, in this study for a long time. And right now... We're we're t- we're learning about giving and sowing into God's kingdom, letting letting God lead us and guide us into and in what we need to do to help people see what we see. You see this this world is full of full of people that that would follow God, would follow Jesus Christ, and and a, and a, and a uh, millions of them that are born again, but they've never been taught who they are in Christ Jesus. They've never been taught that they can be strong in their salvation. That's what well, that's what this ministry is called to do is to teach them that. I sat in a pastor's office this week, and uh, I sat in his office, and and he does this five days a week. He's got inmates that come from the jail. He's the chaplain over this jail, and and he has he he brings them over there to help around the church. This is this is a this is a, a I think it's about a seven day a week thing for him, but uh, I know that he gets these these inmates out five days a week. He said we have a Bible study every day. It might last two hours. I mean, well, literally, well, I came to meet with him, and he said if you're going to get here that early, he said hey we have Bible study. And if you want to, if you want to be part of it, you can. So I got there. <laughs> I, I, I said, that's right down my alley. Uh, and I sat in on this Bible study and, and saw some men. One of them had just the night before been born again. And it, I, it thrilled me to be able to, to tell him, don't let anybody change your mind about that. Don't let anybody doubt, make you doubt who you are in Christ Jesus. It thrills me to see somebody doing that. It thrills me to see a church that wants to reach out to the community and and watch people's lives change. Because I promise you, I promise you, this man's doing it just like we are. I want the world to see and understand what God says about them and 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 what He has He wants to do in every person's life that that will listen. And we'll take his word for what it is, and that is truth. So I want to encourage you, encourage you today to download this phone app or whether, where, however you're listening to this podcast, I want to encourage you to go back to June the 21st of 2021 and come through this entire study with us. I thank God for the opportunity that I have to bring you my prayer for every person that walks the face of this planet. You know, I do these prayers every time I do this weekday podcast for a reason. Paul wanted the Ephesians to know God's love, and I want the world to know it. Just how much God cares for them, just how much He's for them, and wants them to know that He's for them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped 
thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. I thank God. I see and hear and understand that love more and more every day of my life. And I, I, and I, he sends me that love and shows me that love. And you say, how? He shows me through his word. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me today for your honor and your glory. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians 9 and 12 today. You know, we've been, throughout the last few weeks, we've been talking about giving. And I, for since 2018, since I started this podcast, I hadn't, I hadn't said a whole, whole lot about giving. I've, I've thanked the partners, and we've got partners that we, we thank the world of, that, that sow into this ministry and help us do what we do. But we've, we've never really taught on on he or on not on Healy, but on giving. But the Lord has led me through Second Corinthians, and and it's it's just I mean these these chapters are are rich with teaching about it. So we've been doing that, and it's going to go through this week. I think. I mean, we I just I just want to do what God wants me to do, and that is to give you His truths about everything about what he thinks about giving about about loving people and caring for them and and caring about their well-being so we're going to go we're, we're going to be in second corinthians 9 and 12 today and the king james version says for that for the administration of this service not only supply the want of the saints but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto god now I, the reason I do these other translations is to make it clear and help people understand what God is saying. Because a lot of times, the, the King James, I've I've studied it my entire uh, Christian life. Uh, I mean, I, I, when you hear me quote something, I'm going to quote the King James because that's what's in me. But I read other translations to get a, a good, solid foundation of what, God is really saying in his word. That's the reason we use these other translations. But I want to make this statement. I I believe that we ought to study and be grounded 
in the King James. And there's nothing wrong with these other translations. Some of them you may you may really want to look at some of them because a lot of them are not they're not translations. They are they're just paraphrase man's doing, and and some stuff's left out of them. And and if the, if it's left out of them, I mean I don't I don't I don't start splitting hairs over it. I just take what God wants me to have out of it and leave the rest alone. You see what I'm saying? So I, I'm trying to help when I teach in these other translations and give you these other translations because I want you to be strong in God's word, not in man's opinion. So listen to this. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 12 in the New Living Translation, it says, So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. He's talking about what they're doing for the people in Jerusalem. It says the needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met and they will and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. And the Amplified Classic says for the service that the ministry of of this fund renders does not only supply what is lacking to the saints, God's people, but it also overflows in many cries of thanksgiving to God. You know, what what Paul was gathering up to take to these people in Jerusalem was a monetary thing. It was to meet their physical needs. It was to meet what they what to meet the the needs of of people that 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 really wasn't connected to him except through the church through Christ Jesus, and we we've got to understand something. I I've, I've been I I don't know it's just in me. I don't know where it come from. I can't I can't track down what uh what where it came from other than I think a, a lot of my my giving uh, attitude in, in my Christian life came from my dad. My dad's a, a very giving person. Uh, he'll he'll help you if he can. He's I mean, I've saw him do it do it since I was a little kid. And and I think a lot of my my tendency to give and help people comes from him. But I don't, I really don't know where it stems from other than my just just God giving me a, a a burden and it's not a heavy burden but a burden and compassion love for people and their needs. I've always been that way. I want I want to help people. And pa, what Paul wanted to uh do here was help these people in Jerusalem. And he told them, not only are you meeting their their physical needs, administering to them, but you're causing them to give thanks to God, to glorify God for what He has done through you. See, this this whole world is uh, a lot of times get they get things very backwards, and I see it a lot on social media. I know people that you know they they put stuff on. Oh, social media when they go when they help somebody, you know they they want it to be seen. I, I'm not that way, <laughs> never have been. I'd rather help you and you not know where it comes from. I mean that's just the way it is. That's 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 why that's that's the way I've always been. But Paul wanted these Corinthians to know this. He said, "Listen to me." He said, "You're meeting." The, the needs, the physical needs of these people. And they're going to glorify God in the process. Now, while we've talked about this for weeks now. I'm not meeting physical needs when I do this podcast. Uh, we, we're believing for, for, for a fleet of tractor trailers to have pizza kitchens in the trailer so that we can go out and, and, and meet physical needs meet the physical needs of people out in, in the world we live in, in this nation. And and when we do that, when we're able to do that, what we do, we get their attention. And when we get their attention, then we can help them spiritually, help them, help them uh, come across uh, – as uh, come, come across to them as, as people that really care about them. 
I met a pastor here not too far from here. He's he's over a jail and he he he's uh he's the chaplain for the jail and pretty much has run of the jail whenever he wants to just comes in this I've never been in a jail like this but this jail is very open to to ministers and and he's given up given me a day to go in there and and minister to the whole jail I can go in every pod it's great but he has a heart to help people and and he He's talking about it up there the other day, you know, what they what he does for people and 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 the the church, they give food away. They've got a, a food pantry. Said they feed like two hundred and fifty families a month, uh, give clothes and just help people. And it it it's a it's a center for for just an outreach. And he said a lot of people a lot of people say, Well, why do you do that? I know why he does it. It's to get people's attention, to get people, the the people out in the public to, to get their attention so that he can draw them in and minister to their spiritual needs. I know what he does. I mean, I, I told him, I said, that's just bait. And and I, and I it is. It, it's bait for for people to come in. And, and when, let, let me explain something to you. When... Most people, when they see a church doing something like that, they think, well, there's got to be a catch. And there is. There, I mean, there really is. For, for me to go out here in the public, and I've done it for years and give food away, there's always a catch. It's not the catch that most people think it is. They think it's a bunch of rules and regulations, pound them over the head and make them submit to whatever you know religion says. And that's not the catch that I, I'm putting out there. My catch is to teach them that God loves them and he cares for them and he wants more than anything in the world for them to know it. And he wants them to be strong so that they can, they can go out here and do the same thing I'm doing and help people spiritually grow strong. So... When when Paul was telling the Corinthians, look, you're going to meet these people's needs, but when you do, they're going to glorify God, and you're going to cause them to glorify God. And and meeting others' needs ought to be a, a very important part of a Christian's life, whether it be physically or spiritually. I mean, look, if I can help you monetarily, I'm going to. And if I can help you spiritually, I'm going to. Uh, it's just one of those things. God wants us to be about his business, whether it be given into a ministry like this one that is that is sending the podcast into, into countless people's lives all over this planet in jails and prisons and, and out in public, everywhere they go. They can they can get this free helping us do that, or whether it be going out in your neighborhood and 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 fixing a meal for somebody that just uh, just are down on their luck and not expecting anything back from them. God wants us to understand something today that we can help other get people's attention and help them help them meet their needs, physical needs. And what they're going to see, if, if you will allow them to see it, is God's love for them and care for them. So today I want you to understand something. As we do this podcast, this podcast is designed to help you spiritually. And, and at the end of this podcast, like I always do, I want to give you an opportunity, if you're not born again, to be born again. Because that's the that's what this is all about is seeing people born into the family of God, and then when they find out that, that when they get born again, then find out who they are in Christ Jesus. So today I'm going to ask you: Have you ever invited Jesus Christ into your heart and life? Have Have you given Him your heart and life? He wants you to. I promise you, he wants you to. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It says you shall be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do that today. Invite Jesus Christ into your heart and life and say, Lord, you are my Lord and Savior. I receive you by faith as my Lord and Savior because God raised you from the dead to justify me. Do that today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life.
forever. Glory to God. Hey, listen to me today. I want to ask you a question. Are, are you about the Father's business? Because he wants you to be. Now, like I say, whether whether you're sowing into this ministry or some other ministry, are you putting your funds to work in the kingdom of God, helping people come to the knowledge of who they are in Jesus Christ, or if they've never been born again, to be born again? Because I wanted to invite you to partner with this ministry. Partner with us and help us do what God has commissioned us to do. And that is to give his word away free of charge all over this planet so others can be set free. So that they can they can be born again if they're not born again. And then set free from the religious bondage of this world. Glory to God. I, I want you to, I want to do this today. Go to our website. Everything on our website is free. Download these these phone apps and, and get this podcast on a daily basis, six days a week coming into your phone that you can listen to it. It's free. You can listen to it all you want. You can go all the way back to 2018 and listen to everything we've ever done, and it's free. So go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigal com. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.